Now we talk about a lot of systems, AI system, but we didn't really cover the phase uh, templates themselves. So as you can see, they are attached here. Each NPC can have its own list of phases and each phase entry takes its own phase template. And we create phase templates under here. So first of all, the first option is spawn animation. Now keep in mind that this is something that only happens for the first phase. If you set this up on a phase two, it's not going to actually play. You will play it in a different way, which I'm going to cover at the end of the video here. But the spawn animation is very cool for things such as, uh, let's say you have undead spawning in your world, so undead NPCs. What if you wanted them, instead of just appearing, you wanted them to um, rise from the ground? Well, you could actually just drag and drop or select one of your animation template here, which we create in the editor as well, and it will start by climbing the ground and then he will be able to you know start roaming around or do whatever states you you told him to do the second thing is transition duration so this is how long from the start to finish will it take to actually be active in this phase you could keep this at zero and the the phase switch will be instant uh, if you have a duration here and this phase is the first one it's actually not going to run its first states until this is done so let's say um we keep the example of the undead. You want it to rise from the ground and you want this to take two seconds. So you would have an animation here, you, you make it rise from the ground and you enter the value two here. And it's actually good because for the first two seconds, it's not going to try to roam around. It's not going to try to find an enemy and so on. It's just going to be focusing on rising from the ground. And after that, it can then of course, um, you know, start running its behavior. Next for entering this phase, we have a requirement template. So as a way here under requirement, it could be anything, you could have um, hundreds of options. So this is basically what are the conditions for this phase to be entered. So if we have an NPC here and it has two phases, what are the conditions to go from this one to this one? One of the most um, obvious one would probably be if you go here, for example, and add a requirement of type stats and have this checking the health stats and maybe we can say equal or below 25% health. So when it is below 25% health, it is going to enter phase two and we could go uh, call this health. I could go ahead now and save and now I can go under AI phases and this one could take um, the health requirement here. If you don't have any requirement in there, it's actually going to switch pretty much instantly uh, because, you know, it has no requirement. So it's basically going to be, hey, can I switch to the next phase? No requirement? Okay, I just switch to the next phase. So yeah, I highly suggest, of course, for you to uh, put some requirement of your choice. Another really useful requirement could be, um, instead of health, could be time, combat time, equal or above, and this could be um, 15. And this time um, we could turn on in combat. So if you leave this off, you see that time spent out of combat or time spent in combat. So you could uh, fight with this mob and 15 seconds later, it could start um, the phase two. Now, potential behavior. This is something I covered in the behavior video, of course, but basically each phase can have its own list of available behaviors, not only one. So um, not only um, NPCs can have a different appearance in each phase, it can also have a list of different behaviors. So Let's say you start with a skeleton. Uh, phase one is kind of just uh, fighting you, but standing still. It's not really um, positioning itself. Now phase two, we realize that you're actually a, a challenging opponent. Then it could change completely behavior and start uh, circling you and start, you know, uh, maybe move faster, like chasing you faster and so on. That's totally possible. Below that, we have the actions template. This is what we create here under phase actions, which I'm going to cover in its own video. So I'm not going too much in detail, but basically uh, a quick um, recap of those is that you can very easily trigger actions when you enter or exit a phase. They can have their own requirements and they can trigger their own actions. Game actions are here. And as you can see, we can have hundreds of different type of game actions. So yeah, there are a lot of cool things to do with that. And lastly, each phase can have its own visual effects, animations, and sound. So visual effects, um, these are mostly you know, particles and things like this, and we can trigger them um, as we wish. 
and then we can also trigger animations. So these are not the same as the, po the spawn animation, right? But um, if you wanted, for example, phase two to start with an animation, which I'm sure a lot of people will use because in a lot of games we're used to that, right? A boss is usually playing an animation and is even playing a voice line, for example, which is possible here. So you could have an animation here, a voice line, and even a cool particle effect or something playing when this phase um, starts. So that's great. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all the options you have here. And by playing around with those, as you can see here, um, this has a specific sound. This has an animation. Um, in this case, I play the buff animation. Uh, you can, of course, have any animation you want. But for example, when the bear is entering um, phase two, so this is playing before, um, this is on uh, phase one. You see that we have bear boss, bear boss two. This is actually playing at the end of phase one. So yeah, you can play, for example, like a, an angry animation or something like this, and then it goes to phase two. So let me know what you think about this system. I'm going to uh, keep working on it just as any other uh, AI system anyway. But yeah, I think the foundations are really, really good. It's a lot of fun to play with. Uh, it's pretty much endless possibilities. But as always, let me know your opinion. If you have any question or need help with that, let me know on Discord and see you in the next video.